Welcome everybody. College football week two is in the books, which means it's time to look forward to week three. I'm Joe with the Game House, and today we're going to be taking a look at five things to watch in college football week three. College football week three is here. It's kind of a lighter slate in terms of games that maybe have the marquee matchups. It's okay, though, because some of these weeks turn into weeks that have huge upsets or players that we don't usually see having big games that we can kind of actually see with their own eyes in live time. So it's be a lot of fun. Let's get started, though, with number one thing to watch, and it is Michael Penix versus Michigan State. It's a rematch of a game that happened last year. Uh, this time, Michigan State will host Washington. Washington, uh, excuse me. The Spartans have started off the year well, two wins. You know, we'll see how far that goes. They're a team that wasn't projected to be the greatest this year. Um, even with the wins, they have kind of this uh, thing hanging over them with Mel Tucker going through a sexual harassment case. It looks like things could get pretty ugly there. Uh, but trying to focus for this game is going to be tough. He's he's on leave, and the players have a lot going on. Uh, but the reason to watch this game, this is you know, this is the Peacock game of the week. Uh, Peacock's getting more into the Big Ten and, and have his game every week. So it's interesting to watch that. But also Michael Penix um, started off the season so hot for, for Washington. Passed for 859 yards, eight touchdowns, one interception on 73.1% completion. Following a season where he threw for over 4,600 4, yards, um, I think he could be in the Heisman, Confer Heisman Trophy conversation. And I think getting a win on the road could help him get more attention. There's so many good quarterback specifically in the country but but even in in Pac-12 where you have Shadur Sanders stepping up Caleb Williams uh, Bo Nix as well they, but you know is this game where maybe other teams don't have a lot of big marquee games maybe he can kind of set himself apart because people will actually be watching him give him a chance to kind of get in the Heisman voters minds a little bit so I'm watching Michael Penix this weekend uh, I'm going to see how Michigan State responds to the Mel Tucker thing but mostly just watching Michael Penix and how he does against this Michigan State defense. Next thing to watch, can UNC settle down? Another one of the better games of the week is UNC and Minnesota. North Carolina so far defeated South Carolina in Charlotte in a neutral site game. Uh, but in week two, they struggled with Appalachian State. Now, Appalachian State's always a team that gives other teams problems, uh, bigger teams, bigger schools problems. Uh, they need a double overtime to win. North Carolina did, that is. And now they need to settle down because, you know, we don't really know what South Carolina is. It looked like their offensive line wasn't very good, and, and maybe North Carolina could be in for a, a little bit more of a rough season um, after that. After that, But there are, they are 2-0, so we'll see. But now they play Minnesota. Minnesota's 2-0 after getting a win over Nebraska and then last week over Eastern Michigan. Future pro players on the roster, including safety Tyler Newbin, if you watch – our NFL draft prospects to watch video each week. We know that he has been highlighted for this week. He's going up against Drake May. That, that makes makes sense that he would be one of the guys to watch. Tight end Brevin Span Ford is also a future pro. And if the Golden Gophers play well, I mean, if Appalachian State plays him close, why couldn't Minnesota? So I want to see UNC settle down. Let's see how this ACC pecking order goes. I mean, Clemson looks like they're struggling. Could UNC swoop in and, 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 and make some noise there? Possibly, but that defense has to get better than last year. And also, you know, you got Florida State, uh, who's playing extremely well. Next thing up, we have the BYU-Arkansas rematch. So last season, these two teams played. A lot of rematches happening this year. Um, and Arkansas won a high-scoring game on the road, 52-35. to Both teams struggled to live up to the preseason expectations um, from last season, but plenty has changed since then. Arkansas enters the game with a 2-0 record. Wins over West Carolina and Kent State. BYU's 2-0 with wins over Sam Houston State and Southern Utah. Uh, a win in this game for either side could be a top 25 uh, kind of thing. A top, it could propel them into the top 25 next week. Uh, important thing for Arkansas is that K.J. Jefferson is healthy. They really struggled last year because their defense kind of had some injuries, but also he was injured, and that really hurt their ability to move the football. Uh, he's... Looks like he's back. There's highlights of him where, where 250-pound linebackers are just bouncing right off of him after they blitz. Um, so having him healthy, his dual threat ability is good. Him and Rocket Sanders, that is, although Rocket Sanders has dealt with injury early in the season as well. Um, I think against BYU, he can have a really big game. For the BYU side, you're going to watch Keaton Slovis, who played at USC, transferred to West Virginia, and now is playing at BYU. Uh, if he can improve that offense, they can have a better year too. But it's going to be very, very tough to go beat Arkansas at Arkansas. I think Arkansas wins this one, uh, but I do think it's, it could be a good game to watch this weekend. Number four, can South Carolina get a surprise upset? Now, I already mentioned South Carolina. It's hard to get a read on, on how good they are. Last season, they finished the year strong after a slow start. Can they come together this year and do some, some similar things? 
I don't know. They start off the season one and one. Lost North Carolina. Offensive line looked bad, particularly um, last week. They beat Furman. I, I don't know how that's gonna how that's gonna play this week. Can they can they get up for good competition? It always seems like maybe they pick off one of the better teams, but they got Georgia. So Georgia uh, has plenty of starters returning from last year's team, at least on the defensive side of the ball. They have seven returning starters. Their defense looks good. They're they're communicating well. Their offense is still getting into the flow. Carson Beck still getting used to running this offense. Uh, they've they've lost a ton on the offensive line in the wide receiver room. We're going to see how they go in this game. Uh, in this game last year, I believe Brock Bowers had a pretty big game, and they actually used him as, as, as a runner as well. Um, but it's just kind of the back of your mind here. Can South Carolina pull off this upset? Can they do something that you know no one thought they were going to be Tennessee last year? No one thought they were going to be Clemson last year. They did it. And now can we see them possibly pull off an upset? And also, can we see Georgia play someone who's a little bit better than their first two weeks of competition? So can South Carolina get the surprise upset? Something to watch? I really don't think so, but at the end of the day, uh, still worth keeping an eye keeping an eye on this weekend. Next thing up for me, Ohio State defense versus Western Kentucky. This is kind of a more of a fun matchup, honestly. Uh, a lot of talk has been made about Ohio State's offense this offseason. Kyle McCord is now the starting quarterback officially. Uh, he needs to continue to improve. If offensive line kind of looks weaker this year, and there's been a lot of talk about that. But the Buckeyes look like they've improved defensively so far. And the only way to test that is to play good offenses. So we're going to see what they can do this week and then even next week when they play Notre Dame. Uh, this will help them get ready for Notre Dame as well because, you know, Western Kentucky likes to air the ball out. Notre Dame has new quarterback Sam Hartman. So I, I want to see how Ohio State does in this game before I make a pick in the Notre Dame-Ohio State game uh, next week. So, so far, Buckeyes have allowed 10 total points. Uh, the competition hasn't been great, but it's still notable that they, they gave up 14 points to Indiana last season, only gave up three this season. Uh, they, they've given up big plays. Uh, over the last couple of years, and that's something that Jim Knowles, the defensive coordinator, is trying to correct. Western Kentucky has that air raid offense. Austin Reed's very good quarterback, threw for 4,700 yards last year. Uh, star Ma- receiver Malachi Corley is expected back for this game. Very, very good receiver. Can Ohio State's defense hold up against this high-powered passing attack? This will help us see, you know, how much, how improved they are, if they are improved. And, you know, Western Kentucky is still maybe not a different level of competition, but it's, it's a lot better than they faced the first couple weeks of the season in terms of being able to have big plays. So let's see how they can limit that. Those are my five top things to watch this college football week, week three. Let me know in the comments below which things you're watching this week. For now, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time.